Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Man, I swear, you guys, 2020 just won't stop. It's been crazy. Like, literally just... I don't even, I can't even say these last few days. I mean, hell, the whole year has been just insane. But these last few days, there's been so much stuff going on. There's been so much stuff going on, not only here in America, but around the world. So many people in North Carolina woke up this morning to a huge earthquake. This is one of the strongest earthquakes in 94 years. And it shook up North Carolina. It went so far, people were saying that they felt it in Atlanta. Um, people in Virginia felt it. People in Tennessee it is insane. It was a 5.1 magnitude earthquake that hit early this morning. So I woke up and I was just literally inundated with messages from people from the Carolinas because y'all know I lived in Charlotte for 10 years. So subscribers, friends, just different people hit me up, letting me know about this earthquake. So it's insane all this stuff that's going on out here. We've been talking about, you know, the strange weather phenomenons, all the fires. You know, we're still in Leo season, all the water deaths. Um, water deaths are continuing. Just yesterday, I had posted on Instagram that once again, late Lanier was trending on Twitter. So if you guys do not know, two men were found dead on a boat on Lake Lanier. And supposedly the generator um, caused a bunch of carbon monoxide to happen. And they both went to sleep and never woke up. So this story is very, very eerie. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys both of these news clips. Go ahead and check this out. Many people are buzz today asking, did you feel it? They're talking about a 5.1 magnitude earthquake that hit North Carolina this morning. The quake hit Sparta, North Carolina, near the Virginia border just after 8 this morning. But people as far as south as far as south as Thompson, Georgia, and even Lake Harding in Alabama said they felt it too. Here's a look at a number of people who said they felt it across the metro. We're talking Marietta, Ackworth, Stockbridge, Decatur, Kennesaw, Sharpsburg. Lots of people were talking about this on social media. Tracy Emick Pierce spoke to a local seismologist about why so many people were able to feel the quake hundreds of miles away and if we could expect any aftershocks. At 8.07 Sunday morning, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake hit near Sparta, North Carolina. This baby monitor video shows it happening. Sally Gustafson says it woke her up in Watkinsville, Georgia, almost 300 miles away. I was sleeping and there was just movement enough to wake me up from my sleep. Seismologist Dr. Andy Newman says here on the East Coast, since the Earth's crust is less damaged, these waves can travel very far. Newman says aftershocks will probably happen from this earthquake. Now they could be another 5.1, but it's more likely they'd be no stronger than a 4.1 magnitude quake. Those aftershocks could happen anytime from this next month to sometime Tonight, next A tragedy year. on Lake Lanier after two men were found dead on a boat, a third taken to the hospital, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office says he seems to have suffered from carbon monoxide exposure. The Sheriff's Office tells us all three men are part of the same family. They camped out on the boat last night and family members found the boat this morning and had to tow it back to Mary Alice Park. The Sheriff's Office says this appears to be a tragic accident. They say they found a generator on the boat and while it was not in an enclosed area, it was positioned so that the exhaust filled the cabin where the men slept. The Sheriff's Office is reminding people to make sure those generators are positioned so exhaust can dissipate safely. All right, so you guys just saw both those news clips, one about the hurricane and the other about Lake Lanier. And I did a whole esoterical breakdown of Lake Lanier about maybe two, three weeks ago. Um, you know, Lake Lanier has a very, very sordid history. It's a very spiritual place. Um, it was built over a town. A town that was owned by thriving, it was a thriving black community. So the spirits have not left Lake Lanier. And people from Atlanta, especially in the black community, they stay the hell away from Lake Lanier. There's been more deaths at Lake Lanier than any lake. I mean, it's insane, but people continue to go, you know, to each its own. But people need to be very, very careful. I mean, literally every other week, there's a death at Lake Lanier. And you don't have to be in the water to die. These guys weren't in the water. They were literally on their boat, and they still succumbed to carbon monoxide. That is a rare death, 
even in a home, let alone on a boat. So that just lets you know the power of Lake Lanier. And once again, I would stay the hell away from that lake. I don't know how many times people need to be told, wear a mask, arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor, and do not go to Lake Lanier. That was a meme I saw on Twitter. And it's the truth. You know, stay the hell away from Lake Lanier. Since 1994, there have been 160 deaths on that lake. So that should tell you something. Those water spirits don't play around those parts. So now in other 2020 news, um, there's been a lot of fires. A lot of fires have been going on, and especially in the Middle East. So this morning, I also woke up to people sending me messages about a fire that went down in Kuwait. Late last night, there was a huge building fire that went down in Dubai. So it's been a lot of fires going on, and it's really scary, you know, just all this stuff. And from what I hear, Kuwait is a very, very hot country. And, you know, they do deal with occasional fires. But when you have fires occurring in Kuwait, Albania, Saudi Arabia, um, Dubai, then we had the blast in Lebanon, uh, North Korea, China. At some point in time, you have to ask yourself, this can't be a coincidence. It's just way too many fires that are happening. And people in those countries in the Middle East and Kuwait, even they're giving it the side eye. So it's very easy to dismiss it and say, well, it's just hot. You know, fires start during the summer. But not this many and not in so many different locations and not continuously. Literally every day since that bombing happened in Lebanon, there's been a huge fire or an explosion. So something is just not right. You know, like 2020 is not <laughs> 2020 refuses to take a break. It's not holding any prisoners. And it's really scary. You know, like we just got to stay prayed up because the stuff that's going on in 2020 just does not make any sense. You know, even I talked about the explosion that happened in Iraq that also happened um, about two days ago. And it happened at a food and electrical storage. And that's very disturbing because we've been talking for months now about food shortages around the world. A lot of food, there's a shortage. I don't know how many more things this country can humanly go through. The very tragic explosion that took place in Lebanon on Tuesday comes on top of so many layers of crises that Lebanon has been undergoing. Lebanon was already a country in crisis. It went through 15 years of civil war that ended in 1990. But even now, tensions remain. The economy has been in a meltdown with almost half of the population living under the poverty line. We've seen uh, a banking crisis that means you can't even get your money out of the bank. One of the highest debt to GDP ratios in the world, one of the most indebted countries in the world, which means that we don't get basic public services. We're not getting the garbage uh, picked up in this country. We don't have electricity. We have 16 hours a day of, of power cuts. It's kind of just like hanging on by a thread. We're just kind of living on luck. Um, and anything can go wrong at any time. This year, the situation in Lebanon became even worse when the COVID-19 pandemic hit, beyond the health crisis. It also threw people out of work. Now, the explosions near Beirut's port and central district, which killed at least 135 people and injured thousands. Because of the explosions, the country might be facing even worse food security and poverty problems. It left a quarter of a million people without habitable homes. The central grain silo in Lebanon was destroyed in the blast, leaving the nation with a grain reserve that will feed people for less than a month. This is where the Lebanese store their grain for their daily bread. The Lebanese literally eat bread every day. It's called the Aish in Arabic, which means live. Now with the grains all gone and with the difficulty of importing anything and with the financial crisis that makes it impossible for the country to pay, for goods to be imported. Now countries around the world are stepping up to help the Lebanese people, like Canada, which gave more than a million dollars to the Red Cross to meet urgent needs like food and medical services, and is promising up to $5 million in humanitarian aid. Jordan also sent a field hospital to Beirut, setting up dozens of operating beds. Agencies with the United Nations have also been trying to coordinate relief efforts for some of the most vulnerable, like refugees. 
This is a longer term economic crisis that's been going on for a few months. It's been fueling and brewing and the consequences on every single household in Lebanon has been very deeply felt. Unplugged in, from the farm to the table, coronavirus threatening the global supply of food. With customers of restaurants and hotels slowing to a trickle, farmers are now flooding fields with spoiled milk. Livestock are slaughtered, but not for dinner, as processing plants shutter with workers falling ill to COVID-19. But it's a realignment of the food system that's happening right now. In East Africa, the lurking virus and the pandemic, but they are also doing battle against a second invasion of hungry locusts. I'm plugged in. Coronavirus, the global food crisis. According to the head of the UN's food agency, the coronavirus pandemic will push the world into a food pandemic. The World Food Program Executive Director, David Beasley, warns of multiple famines, in his words, of biblical proportions. VOA diplomatic correspondent Cindy Sane has more. Armed conflict and poverty are already forcing millions of people around the world to go to bed hungry every night. The World Food Program analysis shows also, due to the coronavirus, that an additional 130 million people could be pushed to the brink of starvation by the end of 2020. That's a total of 265 million people. Shortages also continue at grocery stores. Meat remains an issue because of certain processing plants closing temporarily. And there's also limited baking items and ingredients like yeast due to a surge in baking interest, according to the National Grocers Association. But paper goods and cleaning product demands have returned to normal. All right, so we asked some of our shoppers out there, have you been able to find everything you need in the stores? And it's been fairly split. 51% saying, yep, finding what I need, and 49% saying no. I went to Walmart the other day and they literally had a sign and they said due to the egg shortages you're only allowed to get one carton of eggs. There are food shortages happening all over not just in America but all over the world so when I see fire and explosions happening in places where they store food and grains I have to side eye that. That's very nerve-wracking and it's gonna get worse you know, right now they're fighting to try and get people extended unemployment and things like that. You know, so it's it's really scary all the stuff that's going on. Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.